Rafael, we're here on Vieques in Puerto Rico at this uh, Physics of Information conference. Now, information is important in everything that we do in life, obviously, particularly in these sciences. But in physics, it has a special meaning, information. What is that? In physics, information is important in quantum mechanics. It helps us understand the weirdnesses of these theories uh, that are based on quantum mechanics. It helps us understand quantum computing. Information appears to be important in general relativity, in our theory of gravity, and in particular, in how, how to understand how to connect it to quantum mechanics, which is our great task. task. It's a task of unification. Um, we understand that there appears to be a deep connection between information and the shape of space-time, specifically uh, the area of surfaces. Um, but we don't really understand at a fundamental level where that connection comes from. I see it as a signpost uh, that helps us look for some underlying theory, some unified theory of gravity and quantum mechanics uh, that can provide the origin for this fascinating relation that we've already uncovered. All right, so let's start at the beginning. Uh, how is information specifically important in quantum mechanics and then in general relativity? How does it work? Well, quantum information is very diff different from classical information. It's, in a sense, much richer. Uh, there are more things you can do uh, with quantum information than with classical information. Uh, you have these fascinating properties such as entanglement, uh, where uh, two spins or bits that are in different places uh, can be connected with each, each other in such a way that they're not just correlated the way that I would tell you, well, I've arranged things so that you know, this arrow is going to point up if you find that one to be pointing up. But if you find that one to be pointing down, you'll know the other one will be pointing down. Um, you can arrange things so that you don't even know which direction is up and down. You have three choices, you know, X, Y, and Z, or the three lines on the, on the corner of a wall. Um, and and, and you, can, you can make even that undetermined to start with, and then depending on, on uh, how you measure one of these bits, the other one uh, will be not just correlated in terms of up and down, but but it'll be as if it knew which one of these measurements you made. Mm. This is one of the fascinating properties of quantum mechanics. And it's been, you know, much myth has been attached to it. Spooky action is at a distance, but in fact, you can't signal, you can't communicate using this, this, this tool. Uh, but it does go to the core of what's different about quantum mechanics compared to our classical intuition. And <clears throat> thinking about it in quantum information terms has proven to be particularly fruitful. Okay, how about in general relativity? Well, in general relativity, um, we have this task of making the theory compatible with quantum mechanics, which it looks not to be at all. And, and there are precious few hints we have about how to do that. Uh, one way is sort of uh, top down. You try to guess the right theory, such as string theory, uh, which, which has both gravity and quantum mechanics in it. And that's a fascinating approach. But it, it, it's hard to connect that all the way to the universe we see uh, detailed questions that we really care about, such as what happens inside a black hole uh, or what happened at the Big Bang. Another uh, approach would be uh, sort of bottom up the way that physics usually is done. Um, you try to um, understand what might be guiding principles that can let you take one step after another towards a more fundamental theory. Mm -hmm. And one of these guiding principles, I expect, is a connection between quantum information and classical geometry that we've already uncovered, but that we don't understand yet where it comes from. Now, you've done some significant work showing that information is related to surface areas as opposed to the volume, particularly in black holes and other kinds of strange objects. Uh, uh, that sounds counterintuitive. Sounds like the information of a, of, a, of, of a volume should be proportional to the volume as opposed to the surface area. So help me understand how that is true mm -hmm. and what, it, what its significance is. You are right. It's particularly surprising that the connection between quantum information and geometry involves the area of surfaces and not volumes. You would indeed expect that you can store more information the larger the volume is, not the larger the area surrounding this region of space is. Uh, and, and indeed, it is very surprising. That's why we call this the holographic principles. It's as if you could store all of the information uh, on, on, on the area of a surface in, in, in little tiles that you can think of as bits, zeros, and ones that have a certain size. Um, nevertheless, enormously surprising as that is, it's already surprising that there is a bound at all. 
because naively you would think that you can just store your information in arbitrarily small mm -hmm. objects. Um, and the reason that there's a bound at all, uh, also the reason that that bound ends up being in terms of area, is that uh, gravity prevents you from storing things in arbitrarily small objects. To make an object small, um, you actually have to put more and more energy in it to resolve a small distance. This is why we built these huge accelerators to look at small particles. And, and uh, if you put a lot of energy into space, well, that energy is mass, and it gravitates, and it distorts space, and at some point it's going to make it collapse and form a black hole. And that's what prevents you from violating this upper bound of information that we've uncovered um, uh, that, that connects area and information. So this is, seems like a very powerful uh, way that information uh, is not just a, a casual term to describe what you're doing, but is really intimately involved in the, in the deep substance of what, of what the physics is all about. That's right. You would certainly expect information uh, to play a very fundamental role uh, once we uncover how to uh, reconstruct the physics we already know, such as general relativity and quantum mechanics, from a deeper, more underlying theory.